Regardless of whether the force displacement plot of a spring is linear or not, all springs store some amount of the energy that is used to deform them within their strained geometry. This stored energy is called elastic strain energy. Now, before you can fully understand what elastic strain energy is, it's important to first understand the fundamentals of energy itself. Energy manifests itself in many different forms. One form is kinetic energy, which manifests itself within moving bodies. You intuitively know that you'd rather be hit by a slow moving car than a fast moving car because fast moving cars possess more kinetic energy. Another form of energy is gravitational potential energy, which manifests itself in bodies that are lifted against the pull of gravity. You intuitively know that you'd rather be standing next to a stable boulder on the ground rather than standing below a boulder lifted high above you because the lifted boulder has more potential energy to fall on and crush you. Although you can gain an intuitive sense of what energy is from these examples, physics provides us with the most rigorous definition. Put most simply, energy is the ability to perform work on a body. And according to physics, work is performed on a body when an applied load acts on the body as it displaces along a path. If, for example, a constant force F is applied to a body, and the body displaces along a straight path in the direction that the force is being applied by a distance x, the work W performed on the body is a positive scalar value that equals the magnitude of the constant force multiplied by the distance over which the body is displaced. Thus, the units of work and consequently energy are in newton meters or joules. Sometimes, the force applied to a body isn't pointed in the same direction as the direction in which the body is moving. When the force applied to a body is pointing in the opposite direction of the direction in which the body is moving, the work performed on the body is a negative value. An example where this scenario might occur is if a heavy car were rolling down a hill with significant momentum and someone tried to stop the car by pulling on a rope attached to its bumper with a force that opposed the direction in which the car was moving. Sometimes, the force applied to a body is not constant, but rather continuously changes as the body displaces along its path. This scenario often occurs when a force is applied to deform a spring. You'll recall that the force required to displace a spring typically changes as a function of the spring's displacement according to the spring's force displacement plot. Thus, to calculate the total work performed on a spring that is being displaced along a straight path by a changing force, the magnitude of the force at every location along the path should be multiplied by the corresponding displacement length over which each force acts, and the resulting work increments should be summed together along the entire path. Note that the displacement lengths over which each force acts are all infinitesimally small increments because the magnitude of the force continuously changes along the entire path according to the spring's force displacement plot. Thus, for a spring that is loaded by a force that deforms the spring along a simple straight path, the work imparted to displace the spring is the area under the spring's force displacement plot because that area is the sum total of each infinitesimal displacement increment along the straight path multiplied by their corresponding force magnitudes. According to calculus, the most general definition of work produced by an applied force is a scalar value w that equals the line integral of the dot product of the force vector f applied to a general body and the infinitesimal displacement vector dx that points in the direction of the path along which the body displaces. But this is just a side note for math lovers, so feel free to completely ignore what I just said. Really, all you need to know is that when a spring is loaded with an applied force that points along the direction of a spring's displacement path, the work performed to deform the spring by that force is the area under the spring's force displacement plot, 
assuming of course that the spring is deformed slowly and in the absence of other potentially relevant forces such as gravity or contact friction. Under these circumstances, and in the case of a purely elastic spring, made of a material that is not irreversibly altered or permanently damaged by the deformation it undergoes, all the work represented by the area under the spring's force displacement plot is transferred to the spring as elastic strain energy, which is the energy stored in the deformed or strained regions of the spring's geometry. Note that in the case of a linear spring, the elastic strain energy stored in its geometry, E elastic, is the famous equation E elastic equals one half multiplied by K multiplied by X squared. Because the triangular area under the spring's straight line force displacement plot is one half of the area produced by multiplying the lengths of the two orthogonal sides of the triangle, X and K multiplied by X, where X is the amount that the spring has displaced and K is the value of the linear spring's constant stiffness. Elastic strain energy is a kind of potential energy since it has the potential to be converted into kinetic energy. The conversion of elastic strain energy into kinetic energy, however, is achieved most effectively using a trigger device. A trigger device holds a spring in its deformed configuration until its elastic strain energy is needed to start a body in motion. When the trigger is released, the force deforming the spring is suddenly removed and all the elastic strain energy in the spring is released and rapidly converted into the kinetic energy of the resulting moving body. A bow is an example of a kind of trigger device because it uses the sudden conversion of stored elastic strain energy into the kinetic energy of an arrow, which is triggered by an archer's fingers. But bows aren't the only weapons that have impacted history by leveraging the sudden release of elastic strain energy. Crossbows are essentially horizontally oriented bows with strings that are released by an actual trigger. This picture shows a famous drawing of a giant crossbow designed by Leonardo da Vinci. Slingshots are also examples of weaponized trigger devices. Many catapult designs have also relied on stored elastic strain energy to launch projectiles. You can see from this toy model that as the catapult's arm is pulled back, a string gradually deforms a beam as the string is wrapped around a drum. A ratchet device, which happens to be incorrectly assembled within this toy, unfortunately, is used to keep the elastic strain energy stored in the deformed beam. When the trigger is pulled, the elastic strain energy is released and the catapult launches its projectile. This is a video of an actual ancient catapult being loaded at a park in Ukraine. But perhaps the most influential trigger device that dramatically altered the course of human history is the one that enabled guns to fire bullets. When the trigger of a gun is pulled, the elastic strain energy stored within a specialized cocked spring is rapidly converted into the kinetic energy of a fast moving hammer, which strikes and ignites gunpowder that then explodes behind a bullet. During this explosion, the gunpowder's chemical energy is rapidly converted into the kinetic energy of the bullet, which is then propelled out of the gun's barrel at a much faster speed than the speed of the initially triggered spring-driven hammer. Modern guns use a number of additional springs to enable other capabilities, such as rapid reloading. But not all trigger devices are used to enable projectile-based weapons. This trigger device is used to launch Hot Wheel cars on a toy track, while this compliant hammer attached to a tricycle's bell can be triggered by a rider's thumb to produce a repeatable, clean ringing sound. And lastly, mouse traps kill rodents or other pests by hitting them with a spring-loaded bar that is released when the rodent attempts to nibble bait placed on the trap's trigger. Nature also uses trigger mechanisms to achieve the rapid release of elastic strain energy. 
From the loaded trigger of a springtail arthropod, to the catch mechanism in the fast-moving mandibles of a trapjaw ant, and the release mechanism within the legs of leafhoppers, all of these animals use muscles to slowly build up elastic strain energy, which is initially stored, but then rapidly released by a mechanical trigger to access large bursts of kinetic energy on demand. These incredible video clips were painstakingly filmed by Adrian Smith and were recently featured by Joe Hansen in one of my favorite YouTube channels, It's Okay to Be Smart, in the video titled, The Fastest Animals Are Way Faster Than You Think. I'd strongly recommend you check out the video as well as Adrian's YouTube channel, Ant Lab, since they both discuss other animals that use trigger mechanisms to achieve mind-boggling accelerations. Nature also leverages the cyclic buildup and release of elastic strain energy to enable the speed of other larger animals that also achieve impressive speeds, but without the use of trigger mechanisms. The stiff backbone of a cheetah, for example, is specially adapted to launch the animal forward with every stride, similar to a coiled spring, which rapidly releases and then restores large amounts of strain energy in its deformed geometry. Researchers have also observed that the stiffer a fish's backbone is, the faster the fish can typically swim. Whereas the cheetah is the world's fastest runner on land, the sailfish is the world's fastest swimmer in the water due largely to the stiffness of its strong backbone.